Stellenbosch, we'd switch on light in people and ignite others to follow Christ. Uh, we, we are so excited. Thanks for praying for us. Amen. And I would really encourage you this week, go look, we'll share it on our different social media platforms, so you can go there and go like their page, find out all the details. And I really want to encourage you this week uh, is to really pray for KLC Stellenbosch. Uh, we really, we're really trusting God for a great venue. We've got some options, but we need favor. But we know that, like he said, that's small change. But when we pray together, God can move. Amen. There's some of the stuff that's been holding back, but I believe those doors are going to shift open. Those, those, the right people are coming alongside them. And, and I'm telling you, Stellenbosch is going to play a major role in what God's going to do throughout the world and nations and the vision that God's given us as a church. So we are so excited about what is going to happen in Stellenbosch. Amen. So let's just thank God that this week will be a week of change. Come on, let's just, Lord, we thank you for breakthrough this week. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, Grab your Bible, turn with me to John chapter 3. I'm doing everything this morning because I want to. (laughs) It's my party and I won't cry if I want. (laughs) Ah, God is good. Amen. As we go to, uh, I said Matthew chapter 3, right? Oh, uh, John chapter 3, sorry. John 3, and you can turn to Galatians 6 also going to read both those but I I just want to share this with you quickly you know God does amazing things with this little church (laughs) and I believe that this building is too small so what we are about to do is we're going to have a drawing drawn up um, an architectural drawing and a design of what we want our building to look like so prophetically we can start to pray in it okay so we're busy doing that I'm working on the designs so that we can hand it in and have a 3d printed drawing of what the KLC church will look like with its different offices uh, boardrooms training rooms school coffee shop with restaurant uh, everything that we want in it we're gonna have a design and we by faith are going after it amen because this building is too small for what God wants to do amen I believe we need more space for children. We need more space for schooling. We'll be able to build a three or four in the fifth year uh, school of faith with hundreds of students that will be trained, pastors that will go into nations, women that will be trained to start their own businesses, a school, um, a, a training facility. We, we've got so many ideas, but we need space. Uh, this building is too small for that. It's impossible to do. We don't even have a storeroom. We, lost, we have lights lying there and fans lying there. You know, that, that ain't going to work. We need space to store stuff. We need space to make stuff. We need... We've got so many dreams, but God said, put it to paper. So we're putting it to paper, and I believe God's going to touch nations through this. We're going to train pastors, train leaders, and send them out to the world. We're dreaming about a church planting um, uh, conference and training school where we'll train missionaries and, and church planters who will go into Africa, Europe, and Asia like never before. Amen. I want to tell you, South Africa has got something to give. We have something to give. You have something to give and the world is waiting for us i'm telling you like never before south africans are being called across the world because we are of a certain breed and kind like no others africans are being called across the world like no other time before god is sending us to the nations amen let me let me share about that quickly is that uh, on the 8th of May, I'll be flying to, and I, I don't want to smile because I'm just so, but I have to. It's amazing. I'm flying to Buenos Aires, Argentina, for a conference there with church planters. I'll be speaking at three different churches and help train. I'll be part of an initiative through La Red Network. We train over 40 different pastors on the Tuesday morning. Just phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal. Um, these, these pastors are uh, Daniel Escobar, who's the leader of this network. Um, we're building friendship and, and um, just, yeah, we're just building amazing friendship between us. They are planning another three or four churches within the next nine months in Buenos Aires. So that means five to six churches in less than a year that God has planted in one city. It's phenomenal what God's doing. They're plotting out in Guatemala, in Chile, in Uruguay. And me and Claudia have stirred him to say he's got a plant out in Cuba, man. Come on. We, we, can't, we can't wait for other churches to go. We, like, you know, we don't want a, another brand name church to plant out in Cuba. It's got to be a, some sort of Laredo KLC church in Cuba. Yeah, man. I think God wants to do something there. It's opening up to the gospel. 
and God is helping us to be part, of, part and parcel of them. From there, uh, the, the flights are very, very expensive between uh, Argentina and the United States because I need to go to another conference there. We are planting within the next three years, I believe, a church in New York City. Um, God, has, God has opened up to amazing doors. Come on, we can give God praise for that. That's phenomenal. And it's all from a little church in Strand. Huh? Come on. Listen, it's all vision still. We, uh, the, none of the finances are there, but we say yes. You know, Mary didn't, Mary didn't do anything. All she said is yes. And God has connected us with um, Pastor Kathy from Washington, Dr. Norman Thomas from School of Faith, who will be there. Um, Dr. Yukan Chu is part of our, our um, Ethnos Network. All of them are meeting with us in New York City. We're going to be there. Then from there, we're flying to Athens, Greece. All in one trip, guys. All in one trip. Only three or four days on a spot. Then I, three or four days, then I've got to fly again. But amazing how God is doing something because my flight, and I'm sharing this prophetically. I'm going with finances. That's why I'm sharing this. My flight, the only flight I could get to get a cheap flight, because the flights are very expensive. A cheap flight is to fly right across the Atlantic to London and from London back to New York to get there that's the cheapest way I can fly but I'm not getting off I'm just getting out in the airport but I said Lord this is prophetic because when I fly to Greece I will fly via Moscow so even if I just put my feet out on that property I said Lord this country belongs to you even this country belongs to you if it's Moscow it's then we're flying to to Athens we have a four-day conference in Athens with church planters for Europe a little church from Strand. You know, Rob, Rob and Glenda say, we, we're a boy, little boy and little girl from Pine Town, South Africa, that God has taken across the world. And I would say, I'm a little boy from Strand. God's taking me across the world. He's taking this church across the world to touch that. Then by, and I lost, it doesn't stop because God's just amazing. Then from there, I'm flying to, the, to Hardis and Elby, who's in Amsterdam, who've planted out there. And if you know who's there, by coincidence, Rob and Glenda Rufus, all the way from Hong Kong, with a pastor's conference right there at the same time I am there. God has created another place, another, another moment. Isn't that just amazing? It's amazing, it's amazing. We can give God honor for that. So, Sorry, guys, I have to, this is like just resonating and overflowing in me. When you hear your pastor talking like this, I'm going to get emotional. Um, you are going with him. You are the in investment. Now, I'm not talking about finance, and I am talking about finance. There's a substance in you. Say substance. There's an investment in you. You're carrying the presence of God. And when you release your faith and you send, say send. When you send your pastors... And particularly this man of God, because he has a global vision. This church has a global vision, okay? And we are touching every corner of the world through our sending. And as that networks, you see the, the industry, the business industry, the economic industry, I'm in business. We talk about networking, and you guys know that I'm in business. You get more ground out of networking. Ministry in terms of networking is a spiritual thing. It's not always seen in the natural, but in the natural, you have to move. You have to step out in faith. He gets on flights by faith. He books tickets by faith to move out as an investment, but he's not going alone. You and I go with him in the spirit, and what we sow through our word seed and our financial seed is an investment that will come back to you here, good measure, press down, shake it together, and running over. In your life, in your home, in your children, in your business, everything that you sow in by faith. You know, we talk about buy into the vision. Take ownership of the vision. Whose is KLC? Say it's mine. It's yours. It's not Dave and Sean's and Albie's. It's yours. It's ours. Why do we come here? To fellowship. Carrie laughs at me. She says, you, you love Sundays. You love worship. You love coming here because I get my, my injection for the week. I know it's not enough. We've got to get before God every day. But when we have fellowship like this, when we have worship like this, something happens that goes on in, through and 
our, our lives, on the inside of us that comes out of us. So as we send and we go to all these places all across the world, and I saw, as you said, I get out of the plane. Every place upon which you put your foot, the word says in Joshua, I have given it to you. And we pray in agreement with you, Sean, that everywhere you go, God has given it to us as a vision to reach the nations of the world. KLC. Oh, thanks, Uncle Rory. That's, I couldn't have said it better. You, you've got to understand something, and I know we're taking a little time on this this morning, but it's, it's for each one of you to believe that when God says something over your life, though you might not see it, you know, every single time preachers came to this church, and they prophesied over me that you are a rocket about to launch. Eventually, I got to a place where I was just like, please shut up. Because I don't see no rocket launching anywhere. I'm here in Strand. And, and, and I trusted God for where we traveled. Whether we, you know how long we've been going to Malmesbury every single Thursday night? 15 years. We have 15 years worth of seed of getting in a car on a Thursday night, driving there, ministering. Going there. The church in Agalas. We did for over three years. We drove two hours every Monday to Agalas, preached there, planted a church, and drove back. There's so much seed that we personally have put in, and now we're starting to see how God is opening because we were faithful in the small. And God says, you will be faithful in the large. So he knows he can trust us. With wherever he sends, we say yes. So as we go, and thank you for that word, Uncle, I appreciate it. I know God is about to do that for us as a group. We're going to take groups there. We're going to take missionaries out into Southeast Asia. I see it to Nepal, Vietnam, Cambodia. We're going to go into those places. I believe it. Do you believe that? We're going to Ghana. We're going to Rwanda. We're going to Malawi. We're going to these nations. And we're going to bless those nations. And those nations will be blessed because one group of people said yes. One group of people just said yes. Yes, we will go, and God will do the rest. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, John 3. I'm just going to read two scriptures, and it suits so beautiful with what we just, what we just shared. And if you feel, I'm not going to take up an offering for my trip. I've already, by faith, have bought everything by faith out of my own pocket. It costs a lot. But if you want to partner with that, then come speak to me. Say, Sean, I want to sow into you going to those nations. And you come put a seed of mine, and I'll take that. Okay? Is that all right? Amen. John 3. It's talking about our Father, right? Verse 16. I want you just to read it. For God so loved the world, something that had no value without him, but yet he still loved it, that he gave its value to it. His son did you just get that <laughs> something who had no value by his love changed his value when he gave something to it he added its value when he gave his son our father is a giver and his giving is connected to love when your giving is connected to love the very seed the very thing you give has power it has power to shift your world it has power to change everything around you turn with me to galatians 6 and now you'll see why. Galatians chapter 6. Verse 7. Do not be deceived. Ooh, that means somebody can deceive you. There can be deception about this. And there's a lot of it in the church. That says stop giving. But this is God is not mocked. For whatever a man sow, that also he will reap. Wow, excuse me. Did we just say that? Did we just read that? Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever you sow, you will reap. He says, he, um, For he who sows to the flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. As I said this morning in the first service, you buy a brand new car, you drive it out, corruption already set in. 50,000 gone. Boom. New car is already half its value. Okay, no, no, none of you. You buy a new phone, you think it's the best phone in the world. Three months later, new phone. You thought your phone had a camera and the other one's cameras in your fingers. I don't know, it's amazing stuff. It's just explosive. Phones, watches. You think you've got the latest corruption. He says, he who sows to that. It doesn't say you shouldn't have that because he says he will give you those things. 
But the Bible says, seek first the kingdom and everything else will be added. That's not a suggestion. That's the truth. It's a promise. If you seek the kingdom, everything else will be added. But, he says the following, for he who sows in the flesh, but he who sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap everlasting life. It's everlasting life. Let us not grow weary in doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not lose heart. Don't lose heart in doing good. Don't get in a place where you feel it's not worth it. Don't get deceived about it, because you will reap. He says, um, therefore, who, um, sorry, therefore, as we also have opportunity, let us do good to all, especially to those who are in the household of faith. Look to do good unto those who are part of your faith. You say, that sounds like nepotism, that sounds like favorism. No, that isn't the very thing, is that when I sow unto you, I sow unto Christ. Because Jesus said, you are persecuting me when he approached Paul or Saul. But was he ever? No, he was persecuting Christians. But because Jesus and you are so one. Whew. When I celebrate you, I celebrate Jesus. When I honor you, I honor Jesus. It's not about being fake to somebody going, oh, you're so beautiful, you're so nice. No, I go, wow, that's amazing because I honor Christ in you. And when we start doing that unto others, we will see the harvest thereof. But right at the top, verse 6, let him who is taught the word share in all good things with him who teaches. So we read about sowing and reaping, and right at the top it says, to the place where I am taught, I should give. I didn't write it. If you want to fight about it, phone Paul. It's going to take a long time. But he might give you the answer. I just read the word. The word is, your house is the place where you sow. And if your house is an ever-increasing house, I don't care where you're at, somewhere along the line, the harvest will break through on your life because it is truth. God has promised. And when he says, seek the kingdom first, he means that. Amen. So grab your seed. We're going to sow. We have a card machine there. Snap scan. Basket up front. Let's pray. Father, I thank you today that this church is a church of givers. I thank you this house is blessed. I thank you that this place is blessed. This church, this building, these pastors, the connected churches to us. Every nation where we put our foot in, every church we connected to. We're right from South America to the United States, into Europe, into Asia, into Southeast Asia, right down into New Zealand, all the way into Africa. Every nation we are connected to via the pastors and leaders that we bless in those nations. We thank you, Lord. They are blessed. And because they are blessed, we are blessed, Lord. I bless every seed today in Jesus' name. Thank you for ascending church. Amen. Amen. Come on, guys. Let's sow this one. Let's give God a big praise this morning. Let's enjoy the worship.
Let's give God a shout Father I thank you that this seed is blessed It might leave our hand But it will never ever leave our life I thank you for people that are blessed Overflow, abundant in their life More than ever before I thank you for it in Jesus name Amen, 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 amen So I mentioned it quickly last week And I want to just quickly do it again From next month Every second Sunday of the month, we are going to have a French interpreter with us on stage. So that is really because our heart is for nations, and you might learn some French. It's only every second. <laughs> it's only every second. So Nonu, right there, is going to be the man who's going to be on stage with us. Is any also of you who know Nonu is such a blessing, and I, I know it's going to be a little different for you. But I believe it's a great opportunity for a church to have a, a view of nations um, because we're going to touch them right here by being a French interpreter so we can invite people that are French speaking. They might not have a church that teaches them the goodness and the grace of God, that they can come here on those services and actually be touched by God through the language of French and we'll have English and French. Don't worry, it's not just French. I'll speak English. They will speak English. Whoever speaks English and no new will preach like never before. Amen. And that's a fulfillment of a prophetic word over four years ago over his life. Um, and we believe that's going to be profound for him. So four years ago, I prophesied over him that he will be in ministry and that God will use him mightily in ministry. Four years later, he's standing on a stage. It didn't happen in one day. It didn't happen in two days. He's in Bible school. He's serving faithfully. Now God's going to use him to preach French in this church amen isn't that supernatural come on we can we are so excited about that i'm really just so excited i know god's going to do phenomenal things through this church and in this church and you part of that um the leaders that are part of this church we're going to actually do a bit of a um hopefully on easter i can have all of them yeah just a release and an anointing of all the pastoral team uh, of this church i believe it's a good weekend Come on, Easter weekend, how, prophet, how prophetic and, and perfect is that? We just want to release the, the pastoral team of this, the different people that are involved in this team that do different things. But we just want to acknowledge that in front of everybody. So we're going to do that on Easter Sunday as well. I think I'm, that's going to be special, really, really special. So grab your Bible, turn with me to Galatians 5. I take a little bit of a different turning today or a different direction than the earlier service but we'll kind of stay on the same thing I want to continue on with the fruit of the spirit because I believe that it's it's a time for it it's a time for us to truly understand what it is to have fruit in your life and for that fruit to manifest in your life um, like I said last Sunday the world is sick and tired of religion and because of religion, they are sick and tired. Simple. It's very simple. There are people who are worn out, who don't have any desire to live anymore, and they can't find any answer from any church. It's true. You know, two years ago, I was privileged to take a bit of a sabbatical and was in a very tough period of my life, but God sent me to the Camino, and this is where a lot of things in my life shifted to really take on with God. And on that time... Um, I walked over 800 kilometers in 29 days. 
um, there were thousands of pilgrims on this road and not one person I met on that road was a Christian. There was no outreach on that road. There was no people ministering to over a million pilgrims who travel the Camino every year. Nobody. Um, that might have other groups who have met them, but in every young person that I spoke to, I met, I had more atheists and agnostics uh, and secular humanists in my group that they just weren't interested in what religion had offered them. And the first time I showed them or spoke about our church, they thought, what kind of concert is that? They had never seen any church like ours before. All they knew was Catholicism. So when we started speaking, that I was privileged at the end of the time period to really pray with them and speak into their life and had profound moments with them after a month of ministering, of just being with them, not ministering, just being with them. I realized one thing, that the world needs Jesus in you. Jesus came and went. Now he sent you. See, the thing is, we've been waiting for Jesus to show up to them, and he does supernaturally end up in some Arab countries and some other places where Muslims are trying to find Muhammad and they find Jesus. I've, I've had some profound stories about how that happens. But other than that, that is only the few moments that God will do that. The rest of the time, he shows up in you. You know, Jesus appeared to Paul, but he sent Peter to Cornelius. Oh, hubba, 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 you had to send somebody else. No, God is waiting for the church to show Jesus. That's why Romans 8 says that the world is waiting with expectation for the revealing of the sons of God. The world is waiting for you to be revealed as Jesus. And we are waiting for Jesus to come back. You know, in the, in the time period that I grew up as a child, we sang, I fly away, oh glory, I fly away. It was ever in a Pentecostal church. Was there some of you? Yeah? When I die, hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away. Yeah, everybody cries. Oh, somewhere on a distant shore, Jesus is building me a home. Hallelujah, I'm leaving until you are dying and you're looking at one more day. Oh yeah, come on, let's get real. Oh, we all want to go to heaven until it knocks. Oh no. One more day. Okay, I'm just joking. It's good to laugh, man. Come on. But that's not a laughing matter. But what we need to say is, is that we, it was all about flying away when Jesus said, let my kingdom come, let my will be done on earth as it is in heaven. There's something about Matthew 6 when he teaches us to pray, that means declare, that means confess, is about kingdom come, will be done on earth, in my life, in my family, in my workplace, in my school, where I say yes to his anointing, his power, his glory that will manifest through me. You know, I, growing up, there was all these conferences and things that we used to go to that was, well, I want to go work for Jesus. I wanna, and it's amazing. But nowadays, none of that's there. It's all about how Jesus works for me. All sermons or stuff, well, how can we, or how can we buy wheelchairs for those who are crippled? Oh my God, help us. We should take them out of the wheelchairs, not give them wheelchairs. That's a nice idea, but it's so stupid. Jesus came to take us out of this kind of stuff. He showed up at a funeral, messed it up completely. <laughs> I'm a little off track here, but... But you're going where, you understand where I'm going with this? Is that it's about his kingdom coming in my life. It's about the world seeing that we are Jesus in the earth. And whether I'm in a shopping mall or whether I am down at the beach or whether I'm in a, I am looking for an opportunity to be Jesus, not to share Jesus. Okay, let, let's get that straight. Because I grew up where we need to do tracks in everybody. We need to, how many people did you lead to Jesus? And I'm like, Phew, I didn't even think of Jesus this week. It was so crazy. I mean, nobody will laugh on that road, but you all know you've had those kind of weeks where it was so crazy and so tough, and then you get to church and they tell you, you are wrong, you are evil, you are going to hell. And then you feel even worse, and next week you try as much as possible, and nobody wants to receive Jesus. And you feel like the worst person in the world, you are the worst evangelist, nobody loves Jesus, you, Lord, just take me to heaven. I've been there. I've tried that. But the world wants to see Jesus in you. They want to experience. And how are they going to experience that? 
This is where we're going today. So, five, Galatians 5 verse 1. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free. There's something about the liberty in Christ that gives me the power to stand fast. I'm going to say this again. We think, we think freedom or grace gives me the right to sin when actually it is the very power to make me stand fast. Oh, I'm going to say that again until it really hits home. The very fact that I am free is very powerful. Extremely powerful. That there is nothing that can ever separate me from God. Even if I decide to want to separate, he says, you ain't running from me, my boy. I have a big enough testimony to tell you that. That no matter how hard I try to run away from God, he was always there looking at me like, ah. I'm like, Jesus, why are you in this place? Did you see what's going on in here? <laughs> and he's like, yeah, I created all of that, Sean. <laughs> but I want you. See, the thing is, that kind of freedom sets you free. It's the very thing where he says, stand fast in, in the freedom. Now, I should share this as an example, is that if you go back into the time period of slavery in the United States, especially when people got the letter of freedom, is many of those never believed they were free because they just didn't see the letter. They heard a report, people said you're free, but because they didn't know how free they were, they just stayed slaves. I find that a lot of Christians are going to heaven still in slaves and not as sons because we're trying to work for our freedom. We're trying to work by our deeds and our, and our things when Christ has set us free completely a long time ago. That I'm holy, righteous, free in His sight. Why the freedom? Because when I truly understand how free I am, I'll understand the power that I have and the power will be the one that the world will taste. Why that freedom? Because of the fruit. See, the fruit of the Spirit was taught to me as things I need to do for myself. I need to work up long-suffering. I need to work at love. And the Bible doesn't call it the works of the Spirit. It's called the fruits of the Spirit. It's, it's natural from the Spirit. But let's go there and let's look at what the fruit is. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. Now, the essence of what I was taught is that the fruit cannot be found in the law. That means by my deeds, by my workings from the law, by keeping the Ten Commandments, cannot produce fruit. Can't. I can keep all the laws in the world. There will be something I will fail at because I'll try and do it in the flesh. It's not the fruit of the flesh. It's the fruit of the Spirit. But this is what the Holy Spirit showed me. Against there is no law. What it means, there is no restrictions to the fruit. There's nothing that limits it. <laughs> because the fruit that I have I can give. It's the very power that I have. You see, the fruit of love is something that I cannot just or try and work out. It's the power when I release it. When I share the fruit of love. The moment I share the fruit of love, there's power. It's not limited. It's not limited to me. It's not limited to uh, Melissa. It's not limited to Henny, meaning I can give to every single one of you today. We can form a line of 10,000 people and I can dish out the fruit. Love, 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 love. Or I can have 10,000 people who will offend me. I can dish out the joy. Joy, joy, joy. Long suffering. Oh. Long suffering. When are you going to give up? No, I got long suffering to give, man. I got some long suffering to give. Aren't you, aren't you, aren't you just fed up of being so peaceful? No, 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 no. There's no limitation. 
There's no law against this fruit. It does. No, it's a law. Law is that thing of 120 kilometers. I know that's just a suggestion for South Africans. 120 kilometers an hour on the freeway. I know you'd suggest it. It's a suggestion, man. No, it's not. It's a law, okay? The law, you can't drive above that when it's there. Except if you go to Germany and you climb on the autobahn. And there's no limitation. That's the freedom of the fruit. <laughs> 240 kilometers an hour with my friend Christian. Yeah, I'm a Christian. I could see Jesus wave. It's like, yeah, this is too fast. <laughs> this is too fast. But there's no limitation to that. So I can do whatever I like on that speed. He says to the fruit, there's no limitation. Well, that means you have the ability from the fruit. Oh, you've got to get it. To access joy all the time forever oh you don't want joy right no i want joy all the time i want to have some good joy that's not found in a bottle you know some people are very angry until they take a sip of wine and then they oh my brother how are you what happened to you no i had communion no you didn't have communion it can't do many bottle bro you find some peace in a pipe or a needle. That's what the world thinks true peace is. Or peace is if I have a big bank statement, a balance that's millions. Oh, then I'll have peace. No, I've heard of a man, it's a true story. Um, Tony Robbins speaks of him. He was three billion strong. He lost one billion and committed suicide. Excuse me, he had another two billion left and he still committed suicide? Then you find another man that he speaks about in his book, Money. He says, this man is a multi-billionaire and he's trying to give all his money away before he dies. He's struggling to go under one billion. Because every time he gives it away, he gets it back. He's struggling. You know, he's not struggling to buy things. He's struggling to give it away. It is the power of what the word is and the power of the fruit. Who is so much peace. It's like you got nothing in the bank, but I got so much peace. Yeah, I'm so, you know, I like that kind of peace. That's the kind of peace that makes you sleep in a boat that's sinking. Jesus, are you not scared? You know, my dad told me the story when he was in Canada crossing over with a ferry. Between now that the ferries there on those pieces of water stretches on, you don't see the other side of the land. So you cross over by night on this ferry. So it got a little bit rough that night, and he got up and he spoke to one of the captains there and he said, Have you ever had a tough day on this thing? He said, Yeah, there were once. Now, you know, when a fisherman says there were one day, I'd like to hear that story. <laughs> a seaman, he says, There were one day when the dews got so tough that when we got to the bottom and we came up, we had some sand on the tip of our boat. It sounds like a Jesus moment, right? It sounds like, woo, when it, when it becomes dark because of the waters around you. I thought that's when Jesus was sleeping. You know, Jesus had so much fruit in his life. He was fast asleep, water running, eyes duck asleep. And he gets up and they like, wake him up. Like, what are you on? Jesus, aren't you scared? Yeah, I was having a peaceful dream here. He gets him up. And he just, and what does he do from his fruit? Peace. Oh, are you getting where I'm going with this? What does he do with his fruit? He releases it. Peace. <laughs> he releases it. Peace. The woman caught in adultery, what kind of fruit does he release there? Kindness. Whew. What does it do? Men drop stones and walk away. The law in the presence of fruit cannot stand. <laughs> Are you getting it? The law against you cannot stand. When the accuser comes in and says to you, you ain't good enough, the fruit itself speaks in the presence and the law has to go. For there is no law against fruit. It cannot stand up against it. You know, Satan himself comes to Jesus and tries to tempt him. How stupid can you get? You're going to tempt the Son of God on the scripture that he is the Son of God? 
after he's been meditating for 40. You know, if the devil probably came before Jesus was meditating, that would be a strategic move. But how strategic is he? He waits till you're full of word and full of the spirit. And then he comes and shows up. <laughs> he's ready to get a smacking upside the head. And what does Jesus say? It's written, my boy. Jesus is so full of peace. Because he's living from the fruit. Against there is no law. Stand fast in the freedom that you have been set free. I have been free. Scripture goes on that all the laws of the earth are not subjected to you. Ooh. Ah. All the laws? All the laws are subject to you. Jesus comes out of death, my older brother, your older brother, and when he comes out of death, he moves wherever he wants to. He doesn't need doors. He doesn't need planes. <laughs> he just goes. He just, and he's there. He's with the guys on the way to Emmaus. They break bread. The moment they break bread, spiritual kingdom in the earth. He breaks bread. He's right to another town. Then eating, he, knock, he doesn't even knock at the door. He just comes in. Peace. Jesus just walks in. Shoo. I thought he, he probably was laughing because they really got a fright. Just put yourself in your shoes. You know, like you're standing here and your grandfather's been dead. Just pops out. Peace. You would get a fright, right? I probably, Jesus was on the floor. You know, I love scaring people. No, I'm just kidding. But there, that, is, that is a funny thing. I don't like to be scared, but I, I love. But you laugh, right? Who's laughed at people getting a fright? Repent, Jesus will save you. No, I'm kidding. Is that, in that very moment, there's laughter, there's joy. You know, it's not connected to the earthly realm with that, the way of doing things. Even food itself it doesn't matter to him anymore. Wow. Was he in the flesh or in the spirit? Yes, he was operating in the spirit, but he was in the flesh. They could touch him, feel him, see. Living from the fruit of the spirit. You need it. You're sitting in a situation. What is there also? No law. That means no condemnation. You, have, you just walked out. You drove past and, uh, and they were burning tires. And you said a few beautiful words of blessing over them. And when the traffic got tough, you said beautiful words of blessing. And when you get to your workplace... You suddenly need the peace of God. Now you feel condemned because you've been saying some beautiful words of blessing. There's no law. Just eat the fruit. Lord, I thank you that your fruit of peace is in my life. Thank you, Lord, that you guard my heart, my heart and mind that goes above all understanding. Before you know it, what are you doing? You're eating some fruit of peace. And then you walk into the boardroom and you dish out anybody for a piece of fruit. <laughs> some peace for you, baby, some peace for you, some peace for you. What do you become? You become a fruit cocktail. <laughs> you just dish it out some fruit because you are walking in the Spirit. Those who do not sow according to the flesh, but sow to the Spirit. That means my words is the things I sow upon. I don't sow to fleshly stuff. I sow to Spirit. I don't dare to speak about this country in a negative way, no matter what I see. This country will succeed. This country will have breakthrough. And I believe in the next five years, we're going to see a massive revival in this city, a massive revival in our country. It will turn upside down. But here's the power of it. The power of this is Acts chapter 2. Let's go there. Acts 2. Mm, I love Acts because the guys are doing something. They're going out, they're changing the world, they're creating chaos wherever they go, preaching to thousands, not based on an event or a ad, Facebook page or a post or a live video, and those are all fantastic. They're doing it because they said yes. They're doing it because they have the Holy Spirit in them. They're doing it because wherever they go, they take Jesus. But this happens first. Chapter 2, verse 1. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, that means it was the right moment. 
Yes, he's viewing that it was on the full moment of Pentecost. But what he's trying to say there is at the fullness of time, the full moment. Scripture also says Jesus was born at the fullness of time or in the fullness of time. He said, they were all with one accord in one place. We read over that like that's nothing. When that very word there is the power of revival, the power of breakthrough, and the very thing that will bring the glory of God to move in our midst like never before. When they're of one mind, one unity, one call. When we've come into a place where we've shaken off all the things that we've carried in. You know, Mal was saying that, that the things we don't need. We've just shaken off all the focus of, of the natural stuff. And we've put our focus totally on Him. And we've come in one mind, in one spirit about what God wants to do. And we all have one desire to see our city change, to see this church turn upside down, to see the sick healed, the dead raised, the blind eyes open. The moment they came in one accord, You know, what we're doing here on a Sunday, it's not even chaos. It's still controlled. Chaos ain't controlled. You've seen a tornado go through a little piece of a little village or some areas, a hurricane. That, that's not controlled. When the Spirit of God came in, there were no control. They were out of their mind. They said they were as drunk men. We've had some moments of being drunk. But that ain't what the Spirit is talking about there. He's talking about something that shifted a city. They were in an upper room. They weren't even in the middle of the city. By the time they find themselves, they're out in the city. Woo! <laughs> they're out in the city, drunk, out of their mind. Full of fruit. A bunch of fruit cocktails in the city. Woo! Sorry, I'm getting a little excited because I'm trying to keep my fruit inside. And like I said this morning, who let the fruit out? <laughs> Put that fruit back. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to keep control here. <laughs> That's the kind of thing that shakes the world. Like, what are you on? Fruit. <laughs> like, why are you so chilled? I'm peace, man. I'm, like, I'm so high on my fruit right now. <laughs> Do you want a peace? Okay, I'll just I'll lay my hands on you, brother. <laughs> Some of the world is tired of what they've been seeing. They want to eat of your fruit. They want to see the fruit in fullness that you eat of too. It doesn't help. We're trying to sell something we don't eat ourselves. <laughs> We need to eat it ourselves. It's so good, man. It's so good. Hmm. Sure. Hmm. It's so good. <laughs> it's so good, man. <laughs> Just eat a little, eat a little bit, man. Just, just eat a little bit. <laughs> Woo! Jesus, you're good. Jesus, you're good, man. You know, I, mm, mm. sure, he's good, man. Sure. Sorry, I'm just having a good time with Jesus. It's so good. You know, we don't serve a dead God. We don't have to go to some sort of place where you have to sit around and wait. This power when we come together. There's something about the fact that they were together in the upper room and they were in one mind. When they were in one mind, in one spirit about what God wants to do. We'll be talking. I believe there's a day coming not far from now when we'll be talking in the spirit. And before we know it, we'll, we'll move out in the, 
while the people are worshiping and we'll be standing in Russia laying hands on people and the next moment shoo, we're back like what happened I don't know but it was really cool it was really cool You know, Kubis, we talk a lot about him because he did great things for God. Kubis von Rensburg, whether you like him or not, he did massive things for God. And one of the stories, and it's a documented story, is that he had a dream one night. He was out in Thailand. Mm. Sorry. Whew, he's out in Thailand. He gets off a train. He gets to the airport, climbs on a train. train takes him in the middle of the field. He gets off the, of the train, walks out into a field under a tree where men are sitting, preaches the gospel to them. Three of them receive Jesus. He walks into the train. When he gets into the train, boom, he's back home. He wakes up. A few years later, he's at a conference. Hmm. <laughs> and there are a missionary from Thailand. <laughs> And they, and they have some Thai people with them who are slovenly showing, that's the man. And they take him up to Kubis and say, have you ever been to this airport? I've never been to Thailand. These men say you were the man who got off a train <laughs> and walked up to them and laid hands on them and they got saved. See, the thing is, you go to bed thinking you're going to rest. When you should go to bed going, Lord, take me places tonight. I want to heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers. <laughs> yes! yes. Pastor Andre Schroeder stands one night preaching and he feels a moment where he's kind of like, he doesn't know if he's there or if he's out of his body or in his body. And he thinks upon a pastor from Pretoria. Mm. Pastor name is Pastor Peter Nell. Pastor Peter Nell in that very moment is sitting in his house thinking about quitting ministry. Mm. Sitting with his wife. And he looks up. And as he looks up into the hallway, Pastor Andre Schroeder walks into his lounge, puts his hand on him, says, Peter, you are called by God. Stop it. And walks out. He calls him up. He realizes this phone's off. He tries to get hold of him. He says, where were you now? He says, I was preaching now. I said, but I felt something about you. What happened? He says, you were in my house. He says, I didn't even realize it. <laughs> Who do we serve? The God of the universe. The God of the supernatural. The God of the heavens. What is impossible for him? Nothing. I'm going to tell you something because some of you are looking and you're hearing stories about me traveling. I want to tell you this young man, because I'm still young, I have seen the good and bad of life. I've seen my parents lose everything. I've seen the, 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 the bishop, what's the mother of the court? The Bali, the sheriff. I'm going to say the bishop. It's not the bishop. It's the sheriff. <laughs> sheriff, helpful. The sheriff of the court. Come to our house and take our stuff. I've personally lost a home. I've personally gone through hell and back in my life. But one thing I know, I've never seen the righteous forsaken. I've never. See, the thing is, when you get to a place, when you say to the devil, no matter what you do, you can't touch me. And you lose all fear. Something shifts in your life. Something changes when you say, you can't touch the fact that God is my father. Ooh, and I'm going to eat some fruit while you take my stuff. <laughs> Who let the fruit out? <laughs> you know, for your sake, I'm still keeping it. But inside, I'm gone, man. Ish. What are you eating? What are you thinking about? Listen, I love sport, but I really don't care who's winning what right now. Because I believe God wants to change our nation. I don't care if, if all the Springboks are doing something or none are doing anything or people are burning tires. Or, I really don't care anything. I know what God wants to do. 
I've stopped consuming my mind with nonsense. Whew, sorry. I just don't know anymore because I know him. Jesus wasn't concerned about the Roman Empire. He was very much concerned about the kingdom of God manifested in his city, in his time, and for them to go out, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth. Right now I'm living, I'm starting to live of what I said to God as a 17-year-old boy in a conference of missions when I stood up and I said, Lord, send me. I don't care where you send me, but if it's Uzbekistan, I'll choose that. I didn't even know. It just sounded really cool. Oh. <laughs> it didn't happen then. And I took a lot of detours. But God's sending me to the nations. All he needs today for you to say is, Lord, send me. Lord, I want to eat of your fruit. I want to be you to the people. I want to show forth who my father is. Because 2 Corinthians 5 says, we received a ministry of reconciliation. To show the world who our Father is. Who is my Father? God. Who? Could you stand with me, please? Come on, let's become aware of the Spirit. Zema, come on, can you feel something in the Spirit? Can you feel it in the atmosphere? It's not because we're laughing. It's not because it's just funny. It's not because just it's a nice motivation. It's the truth. He says, stand fast in the liberty, the freedom that you've been set free. I'm free from the world economy. I'm free from depression. I'm free from political things. I'm free. I'm free from my past. I'm free from my bloodline. I'm free from my mistakes I made. I'm free from the choices I made. Your grace is sufficient for me. Oh, Jesus. 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 Oh, you're beautiful, Jesus. You're beautiful. Reba no lo sun de leba yesha yesin to book. Your presence, Jesus. I believe that God is stirring up something in people's hearts for people. He said he left the 99 for the one so that the one can touch the 99. I believe there's some of you standing here today they're going to start praying for the sick and they're going to get healed. You're going to lay hands on, on blind people and they will recover sight. Some of you are going to be traveling to nations across the world that God is sending you and those nations will be touched because of you. You're going to be church planters coming out of this, of this group here today. There's going to be finances released out of this group today that the world won't know that Jesus is alive. There's something about a ship. People are going to get healed and saved in our neighborhoods in our shopping malls because we're of one mind one spirit
Rebun tu lomo ye sangarama yedi. Released, released, released today. A heart for people, a heart for the nations, a heart for our country. Free, free, free today. your focus back on him today just bring it back away from the things that distract and put it on Jesus say Lord I choose you I choose to walk on his spirit I choose you you're so good you're so good you're so good this Pastor Manny who JD and me ministered at in Manila in the Philippines when they were driving JD shared the story but sometimes we hear a story and we don't pull it through to our own life we start and we don't um, connect it to our own circumstances is that as they drove up in the street that's right he said we couldn't walk in these streets a few years ago but because the gospel of the good news of grace is preached here now in conjunction with the godly government that is come abroad our city is changing we can walk on these streets we hear that of manila i want to pull it through to south africa i want to pull it through to your place i want to pull it through to every single because of the gospel our city will change because of the gospel. Do you know that in the Philippines, the revival in the Philippines, the change, the war was incredible, the drugs, the things. But when salvation and revival came, the Philippines got turned upside down. The president called in all the pastors and said, how do we change this nation? He said, let's pray. And they all prayed in one mind and one unity and God changed the Philippines. I believe today, South Africa, you, you are the change. It's not somebody else. It's you. It's not a political party. It's not somebody that's coming from the United States. It's not anybody from anywhere else. It's me. I want to be a blessing to the nations. I want to see my city change. I'm going to be financially strong to do that. I'm the one that says, Lord, pick me. I want to be the one. I'm taking it, Lord, because you said it. And we will see our country change. We will see our continent change. And revival will come to South Africa. I truly believe it with my heart. So let's end. Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for the Holy Spirit for stirring something in our hearts. But I believe more than anything else, Lord, you're going to stir something when we go home. You're going to stir it on Monday. You're going to stir it on Tuesday. You're going to stir it on Wednesday. You're going to stir it on Thursday. You're going to stir it on Friday, Saturday evening. We're going to get ready to come to church. Friday morning, we're going to celebrate the cross, the victory, the greatest victory ever won. Sunday morning, we're going to shout, rejoice, because you overcame death, hell, Hades, the grave, and you took the keys away. Lord, we thank you for victory freedom in jesus name and everybody say amen come on let's give god a shout of praise today fruit cocktail week eat of the fruit bless you have a wonderful week thank you guys thanks for coming bless you
may really be a fruit cocktail of God's goodness in your life. We bless you. Thank you for joining us. Bye-bye.